while the world was asleep, something shifted, something began, and what seemed like a regular night was the guise for a master plan. For someone was already on their way, someone expected, but we could say unprecedented, and it almost passed us by. So no anticipation, no staying up late, no hoping and wishing we might be awake when he came. For to us, this night was the same as any other we'd known. But creation had started to groan. Creation was calling to all of us snoring away, saying, wake, a day to shake off your dust. For today demands of us no longer to be swept along. Today we join in the song. The skies were spelling out the signs. The wind was whispering the lines that the planets together had taken pride in reciting. These were exciting times. No more will we be held asleep. No more to the dark. We're waking to dream with God. All the stars, a mighty machine, shining brighter this night than they'd ever been just to light up the opening scene. So can we have quiet, please? May the morning appear, for the new dawn is near. The night that had lasted so long is gone.
There is a sound I love to hear Is the sound of the Savior's robe As he walks into the room Where people pray Where we hear praise As he hears faith
church and Merry Christmas. I hope that wherever you're watching this from this morning that you are staying safe and keeping well. My name is Steffi and it's so great to be with you this morning. I'm so grateful to be able to share this Christmas service with you all in your homes all across Horsham and beyond too. Now I absolutely love Christmas and I have done ever since I was little and I remember even from a really young age, I was really passionate about people knowing that Christmas was not just about Santa coming, although that is really exciting. But I remember proudly telling my classmates all about the baby Jesus and about how he was born to save us and how I was really thankful for that. And even to this day, I will find myself amidst the middle of Christmas festivities, I will take myself off on my own to have a moment just to remember what Jesus did for us and to thank him. And because I'm slightly odd, I'll also wish him a happy birthday, just because I like to do that. Now we live in a really cool time in that we get to look back and read through history. We can read the gospels, we can read about the birth of Jesus, and we know what he did and why he came. Now, I wonder, however, if perhaps We've forgotten to appreciate the wonder of what our Saviour did for us. Perhaps it's 
due to an over-familiarity of the story or maybe that we've simply reduced it down to a cute children's play with shepherds with tea towel hats and kings with paper mache gifts. Now, I often find myself wondering, what would it have been like on the day that Jesus was born? Now, I'm a 90s kid, so perhaps I can blame Disney for giving me an overly romantic sense of what the world would have looked like. Picture it with me, why don't you? The sun is shining, there are birds singing. Everywhere there's just this sense of awe and anticipation. Everyone just knows it's a special day. And then moving together, they gather as one. And the moment they've been waiting for, as slowly and surely the wise old man lifts the baby up above his head and they all bow down in worship. Oh, wait a minute. I've just described the beginning to the Lion King, haven't I? Yeah. And that's because, as we all know, unfortunately, the world is not like a Disney movie, even if we wish it was. And it wouldn't have been like a Disney movie, even on the day that Jesus was born. It would have been a day like any other, a seemingly unremarkable day. The dawn broke and the sun rose, just as it had done for hundreds of years before. To the people alive then, it would have been a morning just like any other. Kids would have been grumbling about having to go to school and they would have lost their book bag and their pairs of shoes five times in the space of ten minutes. Teenagers would have been grumbling about having to get out of bed and would eventually surface about 11 o'clock. Workers would have been hurriedly scrambling to have breakfast before running out the door to get to the daily commute on time. It was just the same. The morning routine would have continued. And yet, it was a day unlike any other. For it was a day that history would always remember because it was the day that the course of humanity was forever changed. Jesus, the most beloved son of God, the one who held the seat of highest honor, left his glory to be born. And if Disney were writing the story, it would be epic. There would have been a throne. There would have been a celebration across the whole world. Everyone would have been told of the birth of the king. And yet, Jesus was born into obscurity, not the son of a wealthy or powerful couple, but the son of an unmarried girl and accepted by a man who was not his father. And he grew up in a nothing town, Nazareth, a place about which Nathaniel would later say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? 2,000 years ago, the world did not understand the significance of what had happened. They knew to expect a Messiah, yes, because it had been prophesied about for hundreds of years. But they did not know the Messiah when he came, even though there were over 300 prophecies of the Messiah, this anointed one who was going to restore and rescue and redeem Israel. Yet when Jesus was born, they did, many people did not recognize who he was because they did not expect him to look how he did or come in the way that he did. They did not know that when Jesus was born in that little town of Bethlehem, that the world was forever changed, that the rescue mission had begun and that this little babe would become the ultimate sacrifice that would ultimately see the relationship between God and man utterly restored. And I think I can understand why they didn't recognise it. Here we have the Son of God, the maker of all things, the one who knit us together in our mother's womb. If he had wanted to, he could have come to earth with hordes upon hordes upon hordes of angels. He could have announced his coming with loud trumpets and loud voices. He could have marched triumphantly into Jerusalem to overthrow the Romans. He had the power to do all of that. Yet he chose to humble himself, to become utterly dependent on two fallible human beings to protect him and help him grow. He chose to become human to understand pain, 
to walk in our shoes and to become our perfect example. How remarkable is that? That because of his birth, unremarkable as it may seem, that when we go through pain or suffering, we know that when we call on Jesus, he will understand because he lived it. So as you celebrate Christmas this year, whatever it looks like for you in these strange times, I want to encourage you to remember the wonder of the birth of a child who came in an unremarkable way, but who has changed many of our lives forever. That it's not just about presents or nativities, even though they bring us so much joy, but that it's a time to remember and be endlessly grateful. That it is the time to remember the most remarkable man who has ever lived, who came in the most unremarkable way. So this Christmas, remember him, thank him. And if you don't know him, I want to encourage you. Why don't you today turn what may have started as an unremarkable day into something remarkable that will change your life forever. Call on him, pray, ask him to reveal himself to you. And with that, I have one last thing to say, and that's Merry Christmas and every blessing for 2021. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found.